Hello guys and welcome to a new Still Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you game 2 of two games between Vesley and Gonzo in Season 6 of the Steel Division 2 League. So this was in the regular season again of the Steel Division 2 League. This was the second game that Gonzo and Vesley played. It's currently 1-0 to Vesley. If he goes 2-0 he secures the playoff spot. Uh, that is better, it gives him a buy in the playoffs. And yeah, it's basically up to Gonzo to tie it out. And then if that happens, then they have to play a third game. And basically whoever wins that, uh, that will decide who wins uh, the buy spot in the playoffs. So whoever, basically whoever wins skips around in the playoffs and gets a bit of a head start. So, um, today they are playing on Siano, and on our left side we have Gonzo playing on the Allied side once again, this time with the first Polish and the balanced deployment type. And on our right in the blue team we have Vesli using the 11th SS Freiwilligung Panzergrenadier Nordland and the Maverick deployment type. So Vesley, it seems like he's very confident using Axis forces, which is really cool to see. Uh, I know a lot of you guys in the comments um, often say that you don't like mirror matches between like allies versus allies and Axis versus Axis. Um, so in this case, it's great because Gonzo appears to like playing on the allied side and Vesley likes playing on the Axis side, so it's perfect. Um, but Gonzo... Playing with the 1st Polish Infantry, it's actually a really, really cool division. Probably one of my favourite divisions in the game. Very similar to Turin, but better, basically. Um, so Turin, uh, back when the game came out, was like an instant favourite for me. A very strong, aggressive, medium armour playstyle. And basically, the Polish takes that and adds good aircraft to it as well. So it's a very, very early game aggressive division. If you want it to be, in this case, Gonzo going for the balanced deployment type, that doesn't necessarily mean that he's not going to build his division like early mid game based. I think with the balanced deployment type, you just kind of add a couple of extra cards in C so that you can outlast anybody using Vanguard or Maverick. And I think that's basically the sort of play style that Gonzo seems to be going for these days. Unfortunately, in the last game, Vesley got a big, big advantage and Gonzo couldn't see a way back. So, surrendered that game, we moved on to this one. But let's start to have a look at the units that are going down today. So, up on the left-hand side here for Gonzo, he's got an NKVD, he's got the leader, and he's got four Ojsaukani, which are... Interesting, he's actually going to be using the NKVD police, like the military police, alongside these units. Then he's got a T-34E and an SU-76 to back him up. So T-34E there with two star veterancy as well, another Ojsiaokani uh, added to that. Zis-3 going to be heading up to the centre here, probably just to cover this road over the town. And further down, we see the same again, NKVD with a leader, plus the Ojalkani. And then on the bottom side, we see, looks like, three machine guns, two SG-76s, and a T-34 leader. So the leader there, probably just assigned to give the extra veterancy to the SG-76Ms, makes them uh, pretty accurate, and allows them to pop enemy transports or enemy armor that gets in his way. On the side of Vesley... Uh, on the top side, we see two Panzer Grenadiers, a Panzer Strike with a Puma leading the charge. Uh, there's going to be another Puma heading into the town with the Panzer Grenadiers backing them up with an MG42 to cover. JU87 coming out at the start here, and another BF109 G8 recon plane. Interesting to see recon planes coming out of Vesti all the time. Um, two Panzer Grenadiers here, Pioneer Fjord, another Panzer Gren with the Panzer Strike and the Pack 40. And on the bottom side, we see two Pioneers, Pioneer Fjord. Panzer Grenadier with the MG26s and the MG42 and Panzer Trek. So using the BF109 basically to give targets to the JU87 early on. Nice timing of the unload there from Gonzo. Make sure that the JU87 misses its strafing run. Basically what happens in that situation is the JU87 is lining up to kill the vehicle. 
and then when you unload it basically allows or forces the JW87 to turn her all the way around before it actually engages again. So in this case what Vessi decided to do instead was go down to the bottom side of the map instead uh, but Gonzo was just about to unload or just about able to unload the Oshalkani in time. On the top here just blobbing up these big infantry squads full 20 man squads they get three submachine guns they get 13 mozins and three machine guns so they can put out a lot of damage at range nice strafing run there takes a few men out of those squads but currently 14 to 10 another good early start from Vesley in terms of overall positioning on the map Looks like he's found a salient in the centre as well that might push the early flags to 15 to 9, which would be not a good position for Gonzo against a Maverick deployment type. I didn't really get a chance to talk about Maverick versus Balanced in the previous game, uh, but basically, if the Maverick wants to win, they've got to do it before the 25 minute mark. If it gets past it, usually the Balanced can win, uh, mainly due to the way that the income works out obviously in phase C. Vesley has almost half the income that Gonzo does and that's that's not something that's easy to play into once you get to that point in the game. But it's up to Gonzo to survive the early to mid game under pressure in A and B when he's at an income disadvantage. So nice snipe there actually um, from the J87. You guys saw the leader get taken out there. Uh, that's going to remove some of the veterancy from these disheartened squads. It's going to make them a bit less effective, make, take more suppression. The NKVD is uh, still going to help with uh, sort of stopping some of the extra suppression. But the veterancy from the leader also adds to that. So that's something to bear in mind. So yeah, the BF-109 using conjunction with the J-7 at the start, really, really nicely done. In the previous game, the uh, recon plane was used in conjunction with the off-map uh, to do the same thing. So really, really interesting playstyle here from Vesley. Not often you would see players invest into recon aircraft in 1v1s uh, just because the activation points are always quite highly um, valued for other things in 1v1 decks especially when it comes to up vetting your vehicles and getting uh, extra availability of up vetted units uh, so investing in a BF 109 like this is pretty awesome and it, every time it's forcing Gonzo to bring in AA and AA unfortunately in 1v1 is generally a pretty poor investment because again you can see Gonzo making the same call as he did before to bring in an 80.37 mil in the mid he's got one on the top and he's got one on the bottom so that is a lot of points a solid 240 points put into 37 mil AA which is only really useful against aircraft sometimes it can be used against infantry but only in cases where you're being pushed on too hard <laughs> if you can take out the BF-109 that'd be a good kill with the 37 I would certainly stop more effective strikes from the J87 in the future but it's going to get away nice thing about these recon aircraft is they are super fast on the uh, German side of things uh, and that allows them to get out of situations just like that so is this three going to be engaging uh, whatever it sees in the town I assume I think that was probably aiming at one of these Panzer Grenadier squads with its HE because the MG42 on this side is actually out of range it's an interesting thing about this map Siano is that you used to see that people would place tanks up here or place a tank up here and it would cover the entirety of this open ground with a 2000 meter range. Now, since most of the tanks don't have 2000 meter range anymore, uh, that's not really the case. MG42 here, gonna be engaged by two of these Ojdalkani, but uh, with the IG33 backing up the MG42, uh, that's not gonna be a nice place for those men to be. Panzer Grenadiers here being engaged at close range, but those MG... 26 Panzergrens are actually pretty good at close range and without the NKVD or the leader to stop these guys from getting pinned quickly that's not a good play for Gonzo but the oh the Molotov just dodged there by Vesley. Something to really bear in mind uh, with his infantry engagements is that the MG26 is class, uh, is class sorry, as 
a automatic rifle so it can be used within the 1000 or 100 meter range since there is a minimum range of 100 meters for normal machine guns but the mg26 that doesn't apply because it's technically an automatic rifle and so in this case like when the ojdalkani engage them at close range the ojdalkani can't use their dps because they're a machine gun but the mg G26 can be fired and therefore the MG26 wins out that engagement. Anything at range though, Ojdalkani is going to rip them to shreds, that's for sure. With the amount of men they have, plus the extra machine guns, lots of damage done there. IG33 getting some good shots in though, certainly whittling down those large squads. On the bottom side, things are building up a little bit. Vessi investing in the Wilfachwerfer. He's got a Stug 4 here, two SBW231s. And he's got the Pack 40 set up with the Panzergrenz and Pioneers. He's bringing in even more stuff for a bot side push. Looks like he's going to go for this flag on the very bottom side. J87 coming in for a strafing run onto some of this infantry. Strafes the building. The infantry do get out in time. Oh, it's going to be the Puma trading back here with the T34E. F109. Oh. Taking a lot of damage, goes down, blew over the 37 for way too long. Also, the bomber further up goes down, or the J87, sorry. Werfer comes out with the strike onto the SU-76s here. Does force Gonzo to fall back with his armor. And now we're going to see Vesli push in with his armored cars. These also provide recon, of course. And he's going to be able to use these to wipe out these Maxims, which will then open up the ground for his infantry to charge. So, nice little play here coming through from Vesley. He needs to stop that field furfer from firing. That 2 3 1 <laughs> makes the mistake of driving just a little bit too far there. Oh, look at this aim time from the SU 76. Takes out the second SBW 2 3 1. Accuracy at close range. Really, really good on these two star SU 76s, thanks to the leadership from this T 34. So make short work of those APCs, which is really, really nice. Or the armored cars, I guess they are. They're not really APCs because they don't really carry infantry. Um, but yeah, the Stug, if the Stugs move up with veterancy, two-star veterancy, there could be a match for these T-34s. The thing that's nice about these SU-76s, though, they're only 45 points, whereas a Stug is 85 points. And an SU-76 can trade quite effectively against a Stug 4. So... That would be nice for him. <laughs> Look at this play. Cheeky play from Vesley. Sneaking a Panzerschreck around the top side of the map there. That, if it gets to the spawn, will start to kill some armoured targets. But he's going to have to manage what it fires at. Because if it fires at a transport, it might just be a waste of the position that it's in. Regardless, SU-76 still causing problems. Getting a couple shots in here to the Panzergrenz. But Vesley has managed to push up. Get into the trees here. And give himself the advantage once again, once again 13 to 11. Uh, in the middle, the Panzer Guns got pushed off by this uh, descent. And it looks like the flag in this town was also pushed off by more descents. Nice smoke use here from the 82mm mortars. And that allows those close range infantry to get up nice and easy. SU-76 does kill one of the Stug 4s. Look at that. The accuracy plus the reload time. Really, really fast. Takes out the Stug. Good job indeed. Wilfachwerfer uses the rest of its rockets from its first salvo to pin down the Ojdalkani in the town. Now four pioneers pushing in hard to try and take some ground here. Looks like Gonzo, he invested on the bottom side and Unfortunately, at the moment, it does seem like Gonzo is almost on the back foot because Vesley is the one who keeps making all the plays. Like, he's the one who seems to have the initiative all the time so far. And it looked like Gonzo was trying to make a little bit of a play back here, but kind of loses out in the meantime in the town. Three units of those are still kind of go down as the leader gets killed. And that's a really, really bad trade for Gonzo there. But if he can get another Stug 4, that would be brilliant for him. It fired APCR, though. Oh, there we go. Kill. Taken out. Really, really nice. IL-2 going to come in with the bombing strike onto the pack 40 as well. 
He's uh, Stradzi. They're not too good against the Pioneers at close range. At longer range, they're very good though. Two Star Veterancy with nine SVTs and two machine guns. Very decent squad. But at close range, yeah, the Pioneers will blow them up. Just like they would any other squad. SBW231 moving up the road here. Might actually take out these Stradzi. Now they're going to unload. They're going to use their PTRDs to probably take out the 231. Yep. I want at close range there. We had really good accuracy because it's right next to them, of course. So use the PTRD to take that out, which was really important because if the 231 had stayed alive, it might have killed the 37, which would have been unfortunate for Gonzo. Last time around, we saw one of the uh, Bofors, I think it was, dying to a Stur 42 uh, pretty much for free. This time the AI seems to have paid off, like he's killed two aircraft, and with that being the case, that pays off basically two of his AA pieces. And so, yeah, decent investment this time around for the AA, and that's very important for him, because if he doesn't get the, the points investment out of it, uh, then it, it basically becomes wasted points, and his opponent can put the equivalent points into something that's probably better. Um, anyway, the MD-42 here in a bit of a tough spot. Going to probably get taken out by that SU-76 shot. Or not. Uh, but this Panzergren's trying to stop some of the Strazi. Uh, you can see that the Death Sons are being brought in these M2 half-tracks. Now, something that's kind of not really thought about too much from maybe newer players is what transport should you put your infantry in. And in this case, you can see that he's got his normal infantry in like the Stuttbecker while he's got the close-range infantry in the M2s. And the reason you put the close-range infantry in the M2s is because it's armoured. And that means that they won't get automatically unloaded under ar light arms fire because the light arms can't fire at them. And that just allows you to get the death sounds into the position you need them to be. Really nice lucky kill there from the Vielfog Fervor. did kill one of the uh, T-34s on this bottom side. The second one's going to go down to a Panther D with the two-star veneracy there, but the Death Sergeant's making short work of the infantry in the close-range combat. Oh, we do see some of these stuff here with the uh, four PPSH, five SBTs, two DPs, and a flamethrower. Really, really solid close-range infantry squads. Oh, IL-2M coming in with the cluster munitions. Pack 40, though, taking out a T-34 in the meantime. IL-2 looks for the strike onto the Panther D, but the Panther D's backed off. Nice micro there from Vesey to get that safe. IL-2 goes for the kill onto the Pac-40, doesn't manage to kill it off, but the SU-85s will probably finish the job. There it goes. Vilfak Verfa firing away once again on this bottom side. Pioneers have snuck round here. But looks like Gonzo's kind of beaten back the push that Vesley made, which is a good sign for him. Currently 13 to 11 though, and Gonzo's still losing tickets. MG42 is still engaging any and every infantry squad that fires from the edge of this town and using this cover from the MG42s and the IG33 has managed to get from Panzer Grenadiers up and take back that flag that he controlled at the start. IL2 coming in for another cluster strike. This one not going to miss. Takes out that Panther D nice and easy. Good job that time around. T-34s moving up with the SU-85s now. The SU-85s, really good value for taking out the Panther Ds. And this is something that you really do need to do with the first Polish, is make sure that your SU-85s, they can trade with Panthers. Panthers cost 140 points. Your SU-85s cost 70 points. It was the same thing I was talking about with the SU-76s taking on the Panzer or the Stug 4s. Um, all of those trades are super, super important with this division, making sure that your medium armor can trade well. And the way you do that is by getting into sort of like an optimal range with your um, vehicles that do have the penetration to get through these sort of armored targets and then getting those kills. We're going to see our first Arado, our competitive play, or at least for me, uh, the first Arado I've seen in competitive play. And there it goes, the 1,000 kilogram bomb straight onto this poor Descent unit. Will it get the kill or will the Descent get far enough away? They get far enough away. Two men go down though. The off map, will it kill the Arado? Oh, sorry, not the off map, the AA. 
Things are looking bad on the map though for uh, for Gonzo at the moment. Especially with this big salient coming in the middle. 17 to 7 again. Last time we saw 17 to 7 from Vesley against Gonzo, he caused Gonzo to surrender. But this time there's plenty of units on the ground for Gonzo. He's just got to make sure he holds on, gets some more support for his units on the top side, especially. Because that could break very easily if he's not too careful. Oh, that's going to be a transport going down there. That's not ideal. One thing that has happened in the more recent updates is transports now have to fully stop before they unload. And what that basically means is that like before especially competitive players they were used to being able to just like press unload and then like their infantry would just like magically unload like on the spot basically whereas now you kind of whenever you press unload you got to wait for your your truck to slow down before it actually jumps the infantry out and it does catch out a lot of players um who aren't or who were used to the old way that it worked and you'll see it occasionally in these matches for sure and that's exactly probably what happened here is Gonzo pressed unload because he came came under fire but they don't unload fast enough so the unit dies and um, yeah I don't know how I really feel about the change but in general it's more realistic so I guess that's okay um, and it does make ambushes I guess more effective which is kind of nice kind of introduces a bit of a different style of play um, and makes you have to be a bit more careful with just like YOLOing infantry towards an e enemy. The T-34 they're getting a lovely side shot into the Panther as soon as the Panther gets its shot on target. Oh I thought it was going to get a kill but the T-34 gets through that front armor of the Panther D probably would have been like a 10-20% chance of penetration in the front armor maybe a bit more so well, nice commitment there from Gonza he believed I didn't. <laughs> and the T-34 gets the job done. Panzer Grenadier is being forced back here. IL-2 coming in on the top side trying to help out with these bombing strikes but it looks like Vesley is just driving straight through this town now. And Gonzo's got to be careful. And these MG-26 Panzergrens are going to get right into his mortars and his 37. His 37 has the potential to save the day depending on how and when the MD-26 is unload. But with the second squad coming up, I think this M this 37 mil might just die. Because the 37 could probably deal with one infantry unit on its own. But as long as both of these engage like 37 and kill it quickly, uh, then it's going to say they should be fine. But the IL-2 coming in there with the bombing strike. This Panzergren has found the Zis-3 in the trees. Ooh, nice kill there onto the Opal Blitz, taking out some of the reinforcement that was coming up to basically help solidify this position. But we're going to see a supply truck <laughs> run forwards. Guns are basically using that as recon, I suppose. The Strauzzi coming in to push them back off. On the bottom side, Arado coming in again. 1,000 kilogram bomb. Oh, that's a nice hit onto three infantry squads. That's going to stop Gonzo's advance for the time being. And allows Vesley to maintain his 16-8 to flag lead. It is coming up to the end of phase B though. And it won't be long until Gonzo has twice the income that Vesley has. So Vesley needs to make sure that he holds on to at least 15-9. to Otherwise, it's going to give Gonzo a very good chance of getting back into this game. IL-2 coming in with the cluster AP. IG-33, the target of the cluster plane. Cluster munitions can do quite a lot of damage to support weapons. It's something that people kind of overlook sometimes. and In this case, Gonzo well aware of that. Have a good go. IL-2 being allowed to get the bombing strike onto the IG-33 there. In this case, I Vesey basically targeted the IL-2 directly with the AT-8, hoping for a direct hit or two that would take the IL-2 out of play. 1,000 kilogram bomb 
coming in once again from the Arado. I'm going to be hitting these T-34s, weakening them a little bit. Every vehicle in the game, armoured or not, does have a health value. And so if you hit them with enough times with HE, they will die. And you can see like this one, for example, it's taken more damage. This one, a bit less. And you see by the, the different states of their armour and the way that the texture changes on the units, it's a good way to tell if a unit is damaged or not. And when a unit is damaged, they can generally be killed a lot easier. So like a, the Pack 40 probably only has to shoot this one once in order to kill it. Whereas the Pack 40 might have to hit this one twice in order to kill it because the Pack 40 has a damage, a medium tank has 10 health, and so that's basically the metrics you're working with. IL-2 there does manage to get the bombs off. Doesn't quite kill the Panzergrenz. That was close though. Well, it looks like the second bombing strike comes through. There's a lot of damage to the Panzergrenz and the Pack 40 but the Pack 40 did not die so Gonzo's going to have to be wary of that. Or the IL-2 getting the JU-87 kill. Very nice indeed. On this bottom side, IL-2 again coming in with the bombing strike. Gonzo making a lot of use of these IL-2s, but the 37 might manage to get the kill. It, looks, it did get the radio over, radiator overheat crit. Does add a little bit of damage there. You can see the oil leak, but not quite enough time on target to get the job done. They're currently 14 to 10. Gonzo has found himself another couple of minutes by gaining a flag back. We're now 22 minutes and 30 seconds into the game, and you can see that now Vesley is really struggling to bring up reinforcements. He's only got that 80 points per minute. Gonzo the 155 and it makes a huge difference in a matchup like this. IL-2 coming in with the strafing run onto the pack 40 to finish it off. IL-2 looked like it was going to go for the like cluster bomb strike onto the pack 40. 81 mil mortar coming in with some smoke in order to cover the Sturm Pioneers and the Pioneer unit there moving in. IL-2s not only being used for their clusters but also for their strafing capability. They do have the 23mm cannons which are very very effective at taking out infantry squads. And that's a complete overkill there for the Pioneer but gets the job done. MG42 is still in position here. Gonzo knows there's something there because of the pocket. But as long as the pocket closes and he maintains control of the flag, I'm not sure he's too concerned about that right now. What he's got to do is make sure that he gets back to at least 12 to 12 to prevent the tickets from being taken away from him. Because at the moment, he's still losing ground back to 14 to 10. Vesely keeping up the pressure where he can. Now Gonzo really, really committing with a lot of his armour to make it go back in his favour. Arado coming in with a 1,000 kilogram bomb. 1,000 kilogram bombs aren't terribly effective against medium tanks unless you have a large number of them. And in this case, Gonzo managed to like stop one of the T-34s early. When the Arado drops its bomb, it does account for the direction in which a vehicle is moving. So we'll drop the bomb early in order to hit something. And so in this case, Gonzo waits for the bomb to drop. He then stops. The bomb lands short and then he can carry on. Back 36 there. Getting some shots in. I'm not sure if that was on purpose, but it seemed like Gonzo microed that a, like close down to the Black 36 so it lost line of sight behind the trees. Maybe not <laughs> because of the way that he evac it but either way the Black 36 here a little bit too close to the tree line doesn't manage to get the kill onto that aircraft but we are now 14 to 10 as Gonzo cleans up the top side pushes through that very aggressive medium armor play I was talking about now coming into effect from the first Polish as we move into the later part of this game. Arado with the 1000 kilogram bomb once again. Looking for the kill onto the T-34 but it already went down to the Pack 40 up here. 
IL-2 now coming in to try and get the bombing strike onto that. It's flying straight towards AA. Could take a lot of damage, especially if it flies right over this 37. Another crit coming out. Will it go down this time though? It's not even got an oil leak yet, so I doubt it. Those IL-2s, very, very resilient. Pioneer does unload one of these Strauzzi. It's just going to cause it to come under fire from basically every Strauzzi that unloads here, but honestly all this will do is delay Gonzo slightly and then Gonzo is going to spread out his infantry continue to push onto this flag on the bottom side. But at the moment now 13 to 11 for Gonzo. He has managed to pull it back. And if you guys remember what I was saying at the start of the game, if you haven't won by the 25 minute with Maverick versus Balance, then it's a very, very, very much in the favour of the Balance player. So at the moment, Gonzo reclaiming control of the map with his superior income. Takes out the Pack 40 there nicely. SU-85s have had a rate of fire buff since the last time we saw them in competitive play. Definitely valued a lot more now. Stratzi LKMs are now moving into the tree lines here. Cleaning out that MG that was behind enemy lines. A Stratzi, definitely decent against Panzergrenz with MG34s, but the MG26s do get the better of the Stratzi LKM at close range, I would expect, because the Stratzi LKM can't use their DP28s. And so the DPS from an MG26 squad of Panzergrenz is probably a lot better. But at the 500 meter range, I'd expect the Strauzzi to probably win out against an MG26 squad. T34, 76, 1943 is going to be moving up close now on this top side. This is the extra flag that's causing 13 to 11 at the moment, since he did lose control of this one, uh, with the T34 going down here probably to the Stug. His Dushka carriers moving through. They got Dushka on the back of them, and then a Bren in the front that's hammering these squads. Interesting to see these coming in so late into the game, but very good fire support for pinning down these infantry squads and allowing Gonzo's infantry to then move forwards afterward. IL-2 coming in for the strike onto the mortar there. Back 40 taking shots at the carrier. Does reveal it. IL-2 with the 250 kilogram bombs looking for the kill onto it. 250 kilogram bombs should do the trick. Nicely done. And the IL-2 with the 50 kilogram bombs also takes out the mortar. So that works out very, very nicely indeed. With a little bit of extra veterancy, I feel like this uh, Flak 36 would have taken down a lot of these IL-2s. Uh, the Arado, again, coming in with the 1000 kilogram bomb, going to blow up a couple of infantry squads there. People are starting to call these the vacuum cleaners, because what they sound like when they come in off the map. There we have it. With Gonzo breaking through in the late game, 29 minutes, 22 seconds later. Besley is defeated and Gonzo re regains his honour after what was a very devastating first game between the two. So with this outcome, what this means is in the group stage of the Steel Division League Season 6, both Gonzo and Vesley at this point are tied first and because after this is the playoffs and both of them are going to be moving on to the playoffs, they need to decide who is seeded higher. And in order to do so, they're going to have to play a decider game. Whoever wins the next game gets the higher seed, gets the bye into the playoffs. So that's what we're going to be seeing because of these two awesome games, <laughs> which is great. So yeah, I'm going to be showing you guys that one as well. So lucky you, we get to see a third game between Gonzo and Vesley. And then I'll be moving on to the playoff games themselves. So there we go. Let's just quickly go through the kills and losses. The SU-76Ms, really, really good value here, taking out the two 
SBW231s in quick succession, plus the Stug 4, and that's a 45 point unit taken out, an 80 point tank, plus two armored cars. Very, very nice indeed. This T34 that absolutely <laughs> wrecked that Panther D. What a beaut that was. Very, very nice shot. Very lucky shot, I would say. Uh, Stati AKM got uh, the LKM got credited for the Stug 4 kill. Not quite sure what happened there. Probably side shot or rear shot onto that Stug 4. Um, either that or it maybe surrendered after it got pinned by the PTRD of the squad. That could happen too. Um, the SU85 taking out two pack 40s. That's not something you see very often. Uh, but I would say across the board, it mainly came down to um, value for money. And you can see that in the kills and losses. So 3,300 kills to 1,665 losses for Gonzo. A lot of those kills would have come later in the game when Vesti's kind of run out of steam. Because what, what Vesti's trying to do is like brute force his way to victory for the first like 20 minutes of the game. And then if it doesn't happen, then Gonzo's just going to like slowly whittle him down just because he's going to have like sheer numbers on the on the field late game. And it does get you a lot of like kills because you end up like breaking the front line very quickly, counter-attacking, and then you kill all the support weapons in the back line, and then you rack up those points really, really, really fast. Whereas if we look at the kills, like in the early game, Gonzo didn't really get that many kills. The AA did pay off, though, which was really, really important in this game. Uh, he was playing against 11th SS, so he knew about the Arados straight away. And so getting the 37s online gives you a chance to shoot down those Arados, but it also stops the harassment of the BF-109 Recon JU-87 combo, which is not something like I think is particularly meta or standard. It just seems like something that Vesti really likes to do is bring out these Recon planes. And honestly, I'm all for it. Like, Recon planes are understated. They really are. Like, I even, even in my mind, I think Recon planes are useless, but then I play a lot of team games where they probably are. Um, but either way, um, like for the start of these 1v1s where one, like in 1v1 AA isn't something you invest in early on, um, yeah, it's something that allows Vesely to get a bit of an advantage, especially when he's playing a Maverick deployment type. These Arados weren't terribly effective. I think there was probably just that one in the end that he bought. It seemed okay. Like it killed, like I got a triple kill at one point, which was really, really nice. But maybe there was times when it could have been utilized a bit better. Maybe preemptively, like before a push of infantry or something, rather than reactively uh, to the infantry, which it was used for most of the time. Uh, but yeah, great use of aircraft from Gonzo, of course. He did use a lot of IL-2s. He only saw one cluster kill onto Vesley's tanks, but... I think Vesley, after the IL-2 cluster planes came out, he didn't invest so much into the Panthers uh, because he knew that they would get killed off quite easily. So, yeah. I think both players played this very well, but I think time just ran out for Vesley in this one and Gonzo managed to hold on. So an awesome game. Really, really awesome game. And I'm very much looking forward to a game three, which is going to be the decider of who takes the first seed in the group um, and gets a bye in the playoffs. All right, that is it for today. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the commentary video. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. Yeah,